Okay, so here's my little blurb about the block sealer. So I've used uh, several types of block sealer on this side. So you can see I use the, the copper stuff. And so what I did is, you can see there's a big mess here. I, I try to isolate the, uh, the radiator so the radiator doesn't get plugged up. Uh, this one I'm going to re replace the radiator and I'll probably be replacing the cap too because this is basically the foundation of all the problems. <clears throat> you can see this radiator's uh, it's pretty well shot. It's, 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 it's kind of intact. Um, you can see it had been leaking a little bit there, but it wasn't it wasn't actually leaking when uh, I started puffing out white smoke. Now I, pu I was puffing out white smoke. I drove it for like uh, on the on the freeway for like 15 minutes and uh, managed to make it home without uh, dying. And immediately what I did was, I poured some sealer in it while it was still hot. The reason why they tell you to wait for the machine to be cool before you pour any in is because they don't want you to pop this off and have this splash in your face, basically. Um, so basically, uh, what I do is I let the thing get up. This this one here, it starts to overflow in the, the whatever the radiator overflow. You can hear the cap releasing into the overflow tank and it's only mid-range so and it's not puffing out white smoke it hasn't puffed out white smoke uh, since I first put it in and I've driven it around town for like uh, maybe 10 times for like uh, 45 minutes an hour each time and we haven't got any white smoke so um, this one here, basically, I'm going to swap the radiator. I'm going to drain the, the, uh, uh, the sealer out of it, and so I don't get any in my new radiator. Um, and hopefully, and I was thinking this actually may be a manifold leak because it didn't seem like I was really losing any power. There's no. There's no uh, oil, uh, no water in the oil, and there's no uh, oil in the water. So I think it's a minor, a minor leak. Uh, uh, so this, uh, you know, ideally this is just uh, a short, short-term fix because what happens is if you do this quick fix stuff, you're going to have this in the back of your head. You're going to be going somewhere. Your car's gonna start to overheat and you'd be going, oh, I wish I would have got uh, you know, whatever head gasket put on. And so it's actually not a matter of a head gasket. You know, a lot of times it's, it's a cracked head or a warped head or um, something like that. So when somebody tells you, oh, uh, your car has a bad head gasket, uh, basically it means removing the head having the head machined, um, having it checked, and or replacing the head if it's badly warped and or badly cracked. So um, if you're lucky, you can um, surface the head yourself. Um, but I don't do it myself. I take it to the machine shop. It's only like another maybe hundred bucks, they'll check it uh, for pressure, uh, make sure there's no hidden cracks, they pressure test it, and they surface it for like 150, something like that. You can do it yourself, but for me, uh, it's easier just But to I do know it. that when uh, I got my car back after it started smoking, it was a hot summer day, I was driving up the hill, basically start puffing out white smoke on the return trip. Um, not real bad, just like, I think it was just kind of like after idle, after I come to the stoplight and the take off again, I have the white smoke coming out. And I'm 
thinking it might be a manifold leak, I'm not sure. Anyway, before the car uh, cooled down, I poured, uh, I believe I poured sodium silicate in, which is sodium silicate is the, it's the liquid glass stuff. You have to buy it at the pharmacy. You have to ask for it at the pharmacy. Um, so, you know, I don't know. You can, it's just probably a scientific mix is better than liquid glass, but uh, I used liquid glass before and it worked. So I, uh, I, I use it, I mix it with this other stuff. Now this stuff here is better. This is, this is bars. I've always used bars. I use other brands, but bars has been uh, out there for a long time anyway. This is the permanent one. This one here requires you to basically flush your system. Um, so, um, actually, I may have not used this one on this one because I never completely flushed this system. Um, so, anyway, I used this on my other car. And after treating my other a Ford Escort, after treating my Ford Escort, I think probably three times with this and sodium silicate, it finally quit smoking. I haven't driven it much at all, so I don't really know if it's going to last or not. Very likely it's not going to last, because sooner or later, uh, you're going to have a hot day, and you'll be going up a hill or something like that, and that little crack's going to pop loose. It's going to, it's going to expand, and then that little piece of sealer you got stuck in there is going to fall out. So this is only temporary, it's only temporary fix. If, if it lasts, you're going to be real lucky. I have heard stories where sodium silicate um, lasts, um, you know, well enough to, you know, get from point A to point B for several years. Anyway, this stuff here, this is, this is the copper colored stuff. You can see I spilled some. It was actually starting to gel um, uh, inside the can, uh, the bottle here. And this stuff here, uh, this stuff here, I don't think, this does not require you to flush your system. So these are a couple of things that I use. Okay, so the way I poured the stop leak in, basically, I took this hose off here. I actually drained out some coolant. Um, I drained out, like, two quarts of coolant. Then I pulled this hose off, uh, wired it up to here so it would stay up. Then I poured the, the stop leak directly into here. And then what I did is I put a plug on this and left this open. So this was up and poured it in, let it idle for 15 minutes, um, and then put this hose back on. And then uh, filled, refilled with uh, water, and, and then let it run until it was like mid temperature, and then that's when the over, whatever, the overheat, overflow. And then now it's cooled down, so I'm going to let it cool down. I'm going to, um, actually I took the thermostat out, so there's no thermostat in there. I'm leaving the thermostat out, which would require basically to let it idle a little bit longer when you take off in the mornings. But I've left the thermostat out so that the water will circulate more freely just as a temporary fix. It's all temporary in my world, so uh, at this point. Um, so yeah, that's how I put that in. I put it directly in here, let it heat up, shut it down, reconnected this, kept, popped it off with water, let it idle for probably 20 minutes until it got mid heat range, started to bubble, then shut it down, let it cool. Now I'm gonna swap the radiator. And I'm going to probably flush the motors just slightly 
I'm just going to run some water through it. I'm not going to run the hose through it or anything. I'm just going to run some water through it and watch it run out the other end. And then I'm going to fill it back up with a new radiator. And hopefully that will be a little bit more improved. And hopefully I won't see any more, more white smoke. Oh, okay, just to show off, I, I wanted to show you I put the new radiator in. The new radiator, um, it's got the plastic top. The old one had a uh, brass top. Uh, let's see, this, this rig, this rig has got... knick-knack drawer as well it's got 135,000 miles on it 135,000 miles for a truck this old isn't actually that very much um, I actually put another head on it so probably I probably put uh, maybe well I've had it about five years or so. Um, probably put maybe 10,000 miles on or something. Maybe 20,000. I had my uh, smog pump freeze up on me one time and uh, the smog pump built actually runs the water pump on this one. So um, what happened was, um, no, it wasn't, well, I'm not sure. I did have a free, uh, I think I had the bottom, yeah, the bottom, the alternator belt go on me. I was just, uh, hot rodding down the freeway, had to pass the car real quick and, uh, burn that alternator belt out. And uh, that runs the water pump. That alternator belt runs the water pump on this one. So I was starting to overheat. And luckily enough, I was able to make it to the parts store um, about maybe two miles from uh, where the belt uh, came off on the highway. Um, should have replaced the hoses, but the hoses are seemingly still good and since I may have to do uh, a head gasket job on this thing I, I might have to take it all apart anyway. Uh, I'm running fresh cooling and I got cooling in here. This is the, this is the, uh, it must have water version. I didn't want to pack around a half water so I thought the full coolant that has to be diluted basically 50, 57 percent and here's a little tip for you uh, if you run this stuff and it clogs up your, your, uh, your heater core I found that it usually builds up right here where this goes into the heater core and you just take like a pipe cleaner take this heater core wire uh, this uh, this water line off here and uh, clean out that line going to the heater core. Okay, another day hard at it. So uh, I wanted to give you a tip about the hoses. Make sure that the hoses are tight um, and you have a good radiator cap because these systems work under pressure. So basically, if you have a leak, it sucks cold air and it makes it overheat, basically, or something like that. So you want to make sure all your connections are tight, top and bottom, and so I'm going to give you a little tip about this stuff here. It's pretty good stuff. It was recommended to me by my mechanic. Dura Lube, um, pretty good stuff. Um, I believe in it. And so the radiator that came here was a little bit bigger than the shroud I had, so I had to modify the shroud a little bit and put a spacer in there. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully 
new radiator. Um, I'll be able to drive at least 30 miles without any problem. Hopefully I'll let you know in the comments below sometime in the near future. Okay, island for 15 minutes and the temperature gauge hasn't moved. It's down on the cold side. So that's pretty good for idle for 15 minutes. Actually, I got the heater on, but I couldn't unplug the heater because um, I tried to blow through it and it wouldn't unplug. So the heater, the heater is not working at this point. I may try and uh, run some compressed air for, through it later. But right now, it's looking pretty good. And we don't have any leaks. That's the main thing. Uh, when you get everything going, you want to make sure you don't have any leaks. All the hoses are nice and tight. So anyway, that's my head gasket sealer ramp for today. Um, most likely, anytime you pour that sealer in, it's just a quick fix. It's, it's going to be a temporary fix. Uh, to get to to get to the next point A point B theoretically, uh, but ultimately you either want to uh, you know replace the head and or have it totally serviced. Thanks for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe.